Hey guys, I'm back again. Round two, told y'all I got a lot to release. I just have to release it according to God's leading. Um, but this word comes from me hearing the voice of whoever my spouse is that God is sending into my life. I heard him loud and clear. The Lord allowed me to hear every single word, but it was the Lord speaking. Okay, it was the Lord speaking. Um, those of you that have ears to hear, hear, you understand what I just said. So yesterday when I woke up, I was just laying in my bed and I heard a man's voice, a very deep voice. It wasn't that deep, it was deep. Um, it was a nice voice. <laughs> um, I heard the man say, hey, hey, I'm talking to you. Stop being. Your heart is ready. It's ready for me. That is for sure. I'm going to read that one more time. Again, I was awake. I heard this as I was laying in my bed. It was a guy's voice. And he said, A, A, I'm talking to you. Stop being, B-E-I-N-G, stop being. Okay, and you can put an exclamation mark there. Your heart is ready. It is ready for me. That is for sure. Okay? That's what I heard yesterday morning when I woke up. And what the Lord ministered to me about what I heard, um, he was saying, my heart is ready. Like he's given me a new heart and he's put in me his spirit and I am now ready for love. He was speaking and he was saying, um, and this is not just for me, so catch this if it's for you guys. Um, he was saying, I know that with this new new heart, new mind, his spirit that he's put into me, that I'm at this point where I'm comfortable with being by myself. Like, I don't feel like I need to have anybody. I don't feel like I need a husband. I love love, so I would be open to it. But at this point, God has molded me to a point to where I'm content. I'm content with where I am. I am happy in life. I have a new career. The Lord is moving me um, to a different location. Like I'm in my harvest season. But even if I wasn't in my harvest season, the way that when God remolds you, you no longer look for joy and satisfaction in other people or things because you get your joy from God. So even though you may desire certain things like desire marriage and love, God gives you such a peace that surpasses all understanding. You remain content in all situations. You become content in all circumstances, like Paul says, okay? He's learned to be content in all situations, okay? That is how I feel, and that is how some of you feel. God has remolded you. Some of you guys have been married, and you went through a divorce, and God told you he's going to write you a new love story. Some of you are being restored to your ex-husbands. Some of you... Um, it, it's a new love altogether, right? But for those of you that this word is for, you're through with your pruning and refining phase. You're done with that. You're just at a point where you're just walking according to how God's guiding you. Um, you're just walking according to the steps that he's ordered before you. You're not in a rush to be married and that's who this word is for. If that is you, this is how you're going to know this word is for you, okay? God has refined you. He's pruned you. You are not in a rush to be married. You're not rushing the process. You desire it, but you're not in a rush because you're happy with God as your husband and you're just walking, okay? That is my story. <clears throat> that is where I am right now. But in my previous marriage... I idolized my husband. Like I wanted to please him. I wanted to be everything. I was almost like a camouflage. Like even though I was myself throughout the marriage, I wasn't a fake person. He was like my best friend, but I still idolized that marriage. And God had to tell me in the beginning of my pruning and refining process after my divorce, the Lord was like, I see what he did to you, but you idolized him, Nina. And he did not idolize you. I was like, let me shut up. Go ahead, do your thing, Lord, because I sure did I, idol, uh, idolize him. And with idolatry brings destruction. So I had to 
take the hand I was dealt and allow God to remold me, to refine me, to prune me, to strip me. And he did all of that and it didn't feel good, but I'm thankful that he did it because now I'm in a place to where I don't look for my happiness in friendships, in a relationship, within my family. I don't even get along with half of my family. They don't even talk to me. That's cool. Like I don't look for happiness in anybody but God in the steps that he's ordered for my life. I don't look for happiness elsewhere. So if you are that person, this word is for you. Okay. If you are where God has me with this whole love story and you're in your harvest season and he's bringing everything together and he's told you like you're ready this may be for you, okay? But this is not for you if you're still going through the pruning and refining stage. This will eventually be for you, but it's not right now. This is for the people, women or men, you've done all of that. And now you're just content with you and God, but you're you're open to love because you love love. God is love. So we have to love love. We love love, but we're not in a rush for it. But God is speaking and he's saying, your heart is ready. Okay, your heart is ready for this. Again, when I heard this guy, he said, hey, hey, I'm talking to you. Stop being, exclamation mark. Your heart is ready. It's ready for me. That is for sure. God is saying, you're no longer just being. Okay, being means existing, living. Okay, it also means um, the nature of a person. Your being is your soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions. It's also your spirit. It's also a person's character in their nature. The Lord is saying, you're no longer just being, okay? He, he's putting someone in your life, the person that he ordained to share this space with you because your heart is ready. Your heart is ready for the God-ordained spouse, the love story that God has for you. Your heart is ready, okay? Someone is getting ready to share your being with you. So your, your being, again, is your, it means existing and living, but it also means your soul, your spirit, your character, your nature. Someone's getting ready to enjoy that with you. And your heart is ready for that. Your heart is ready for that. It's ready for that person. This guy said, it's ready for me. That's for sure. And for so many of you, this story is coming together swiftly, guys, quickly. The marriage, the babies, some of you are going to have ministries um, of being a stay-at-home wife and a stay-at-home mom. That's a whole different um, word I have to release, so I'm not going to get too far into that. But that is going to be some of you guys' ministry. Your ministry is even going to transfer into that stay-at-home wife and that stay-at-home mom and know that that's a great ministry to be in and don't let anybody make you feel guilty for that. But I'm going to do another word on that um, because the Lord spoke to me about that uh, almost a month ago. So I'll do another word on that. But the Lord is saying, it's time to stop just being, okay? He knows that you're happy, you're content with him as in the Lord, but your heart is ready for love and that man or that woman is ready for you. I'm speaking to my women because I'm speaking from a woman's perspective and I heard a man's voice tell me this yesterday morning. I heard it loud and clear. I recorded it on my phone. I wish I could play the recording for you guys, but I'm recording this word on my phone. Um, so that's what the Lord is saying. You're get ready to share your, your spirit, your soul with another person that knows how to cultivate your garden. Okay. And I did a whole word on that. I'll try to remember to link that word in the description box. I believe I posted that last week that the marriages that God is bringing together, both parties are going to know how to cultivate their partner's garden because when two becomes one, now, mind you, I'm going to give you guys a quick recap of that word and what the Lord spoke. He says the man and the woman each have their own garden before they're married. And God teaches them how to cultivate that land, how to grow it and make it fruitful. So when he brings them together, they already know how to cultivate that land now as one to where their land together is fruitful. It's beautiful. It's the Garden of Eden. And guys, Eden means pleasure. So it really translates to the Garden of Pleasure. And that's where the first marriage started with Adam and Eve, okay? And I'll try to remember to link that word in the description box, but the scriptures I'm gonna read uh, today for this word that I just gave you guys, it's gonna make sense with everything the Lord has had me release and what I just relayed to you guys. So we're reading from, I still have my NLT version that I used for the word um, that I posted a couple hours ago. I'm gonna read from Ezekiel chapter 36. I'm gonna read from verse 25 to verse 36. 
And again, this is the NLT version, and this is gonna put all the puzzle pieces together. Um, and the title of this chapter in the NLT version is called Restoration for Israel, okay? The Lord is saying, then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. Your filth will be washed away and you will no longer worship idols. And I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. And I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees as in his orders and be careful to obey my regulations. Okay. You will live in Israel, the land I gave your ancestors long ago. You will be my people and I will be your God. I will cleanse you of your filthy behavior. I will give you good crops of grain and I will send no more famines on the land. I will give you great harvest for your fruit trees and fields and never again will the surrounding nations be able to scoff at your land for its famines. Then you will remember your past sins and despise yourselves for all the detestable things you did. But remember, says the sovereign Lord, I am not doing this because you deserve it. I am not doing this because you deserve it. Oh, my people of Israel, you should be utterly ashamed of all you have done. This is what the sovereign Lord says. When I cleanse you from your sins, I will repopulate your cities and the ruins will be rebuilt. The fields that used to lie empty and desolate in plain view of everyone will again be farmed. And when I bring you back, people will say, this former wasteland is now like the Garden of Eden. The abandoned and ruined cities now have strong walls and are filled with people. Then the surrounding nations that survive will know that I, the Lord, have rebuilt the ruins and replanted the wasteland. For I, the Lord, have spoken and I will do what I say. Guys, God is saying he's not bringing you into this harvest and this abundance, into this love story, into this beauty, into your garden of Eden because you deserve it. He's not bringing this to us because I deserve it or because you deserve it. He's doing it to get the glory out of it. You have went through the pruning, the refining. He's cleansed you of your detestable sins. And now when you remember the past life you lived, it disgusts you, okay? Because it disgusts me when I think about the past sins that I did and how I idolized a marriage and other things in my life and didn't put God first. When I remember those things, it disgusts me. The Lord has given you a new heart, a new mind, a new spirit. He's put his spirit in you so you are ready to cultivate the garden, okay? But again, he's not doing this because y'all deserve it. He's not doing it because I deserve it. He's doing it to get the glory out of it. Prepare for your land to be rebuilt. Prepare for these marriages to come together in this hour. Prepare for the families to come together for fruits of the womb. Prepare your heart, whoever this is for, because the Lord has spoken, okay? The Lord has spoken. Your heart is ready. Prepare your heart to whoever this is for. I'm going to get off here, guys. Um, that's the word. That's a good word, too. And I heard it clear as day, y'all. This man had a deep voice. He said, hey, hey, I'm talking to you. Stop being. Your heart is ready. It's ready for me. That is for sure. This is a sure thing, whoever this is for. Because it's not just for me. It's not just for me. So get ready, guys. Um, that was an exciting word. I can't even talk right now. And I don't know why I can't talk, y'all. I got my Starbucks here. Um, and shout out to uh, my girl, Rochelle. She sent me a seed this morning. She's like, go get a tea from that uh, fancy place you go to. But I got a coffee instead. Thank you, Rochelle. <laughs> I appreciate all of you. Your seeds, not just financial seeds, because y'all know I don't ask y'all for nothing. Y'all ain't got to sow into no word the Lord has me deliver, honey. Prophetic words are free. It's the work of the Lord. You will never hear me say, sow into this word if it touched you. <laughs> no. Proph prophetic words, prophecies from the Lord, it should be free, okay? Because everybody can hear from the Lord. But I appreciate y'all who have sown seeds. Um, I just wanted to give Rochelle a shout out because I didn't get tea, girl. I got coffee. And I haven't been to Starbucks in a while, guys. I make my coffee at home and I enjoy it. But this is the apple oat milk um, 
latte is vegan because it's made with oat milk. It's so good, guys. This is the perfect fall drink. I would normally do a pumpkin spice latte, but the pumpkin spice latte is not vegan. Um, so I make my own pumpkin spice lattes here at home, but I went and got a uh, um, oat milk apple latte this morning. If you like Starbucks, try it. If you don't like Starbucks, try it because this is the perfect fall drink and the weather, guys, outside, it feels so good and breezy. This is like my jam, okay? <laughs> this is my jam. I love fall. Um, but prepare, prepare, prepare for your gardens um, to be cultivated and these beautiful stories to come together. Um, and again, if this is for you, you're done with pruning and refining and your heart is ready. Okay, your heart is ready. You've been okay with being by yourself. We know we like our big beds, okay? I like sleeping in my big bed, my cozy bed, and just, you know, living on my own terms. Um, but the beauty that God has bestowed within you you're, you're going to share that with someone. And that's a beautiful thing. Um, so yeah, guys. And again, that was Ezekiel 36 verses 25 through 36. I read from the NLT version, but I do advise you guys to read that today if this word is for you and just allow God to personally minister to you about what this means for you. Um, but I love y'all trying to make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, thank you for your seeds, uh, not financially. I mean, yeah, thank you for your financial seeds, but your prayers, the kind words that you guys leave under uh, the words, the testimonies that you sent me, um, the prayer requests, like just thank you guys. Cause I have so many of you that pray for me and you're just so kind and that's a seed. A seed is not just financial. And I appreciate all seeds that are done with a pure heart. Um, there's this one young lady, Reciprocity is her name. Um, I don't even know who she is, but thank you. I'm sure she's going to watch this. Thank you so much. And just prepare, prepare for the Lord to really open doors for you. Reciprocity is her name. Um, and she sews into me all the time. And uh, she's so kind. She's so kind and she doesn't have to sew into me. Nobody has to sew anything into me. I appreciate you guys being here and just your kindness. And I like real authentic people. Okay. Real, real hearts. I don't like little Satan's minions that be coming over here, but, uh, reciprocity, um, Keep leaning on God, girlfriend. Keep leaning on God and he's going to order your steps and your steps are going to be beautiful and bountiful. Um, but I love y'all. I got a coaching session in like one minute. I'm actually working and multitasking, but I'm about to also do a coaching session um, during my break. So during my lunchtime, um, got to fit God in and ministry in however I can. Um, but yeah, guys, I love y'all. Have a blessed day. Bye.